welcome to Nick's Defense Channel. In this video, I will show you the modernization efforts of Chinese Navy, and its implications for US Navy capabilities. In an era of renewed great power competition, China's military modernization effort, including its naval modernization effort, has become the top focus of US defense planning and budgeting. China's Navy, which China has been steadily modernizing for more than 25 years, since the early to mid-1990s, has become a formidable military force within China's near seas region, and it is conducting a growing number of operations in more distant waters, including the broader waters of the Western Pacific, the Indian Ocean, and waters around Europe. China's Navy is viewed as posing a major challenge to the U.S. Navy's ability to achieve and maintain wartime control of blue water ocean areas in the Western Pacific, the first such challenge the U.S. Navy has faced since the end of the Cold War, and forms a key element of a Chinese challenge to the long-standing status of the United States, as the leading military power in the Western Pacific. Some U.S. observers are expressing concern or alarm regarding the pace of China's naval shipbuilding effort, particularly for building larger surface ships, and resulting trend lines regarding the relative sizes China's Navy and the U.S. Navy. China's naval modernization effort encompasses a wide array of ship, aircraft, and weapon acquisition programs, as well as improvements in maintenance and logistics, doctrine, personnel quality, education, and training, and exercises. China's Navy has currently has certain limitations and weaknesses, and is working to overcome them. The U.S. Navy in recent years has taken a number of actions to counter China's naval modernization effort. Among other things, the U.S. Navy has shifted a greater percentage of its fleet to the Pacific, assigned its most capable new ships and aircraft and its best personnel to the Pacific, maintained or increased general presence operations, training and developmental exercises, and engagement and cooperation with Allied and other navies in the Indo-Pacific, increased the planned future size of the Navy, initiated, increased or accelerated numerous programs for developing new military technologies and acquiring new ships, aircraft, unmanned vehicles, and weapons, begun development of new operational concepts, for example, new ways to employ Navy and Marine Corps forces, for countering Chinese maritime A2AD forces, and signaled that the Navy in coming years will shift to a more distributed fleet architecture that will feature a smaller portion of larger ships, a larger portion of smaller ships, and a substantially greater use of unmanned vehicles. China's naval modernization effort, which forms part of a broader Chinese military modernization effort that includes several additional areas of emphasis, has been underway for more than 25 years, since the early to mid-1990s, and has transformed China's navy into a much more modern and capable force. China's Navy is a formidable military force within China's near seas region, and it is conducting a growing number of operations in more distant waters, including the broader waters of the Western Pacific, the Indian Ocean, and waters around Europe. China's Navy is, by far, the largest of any country in East Asia, and within the past few years it has surpassed the U.S. Navy in numbers of battle force ships, meaning the types of ships that count toward the quoted size of the U.S. Navy, making China's Navy the numerically largest in the world. Some U.S. observers are expressing concern or alarm regarding the pace of China's naval shipbuilding effort, particularly for building larger surface ships, and resulting trend lines regarding the relative sizes China's Navy and the U.S. Navy. Office of Naval Intelligence states that at the end of 2020, China's will have 360 battle force ships, compared with a projected total of 297 for the U.S. Navy at the end of 2020. ONI projects that China will have 400 battle force ships by 2025 and 425 by 2030. China's naval ships, aircraft, and weapons are now much more modern and capable than they were at the start of the 1990s, 
and are now comparable in many respects to those of Western navies. ONI states that Chinese naval ship design and material quality is in many cases comparable to that of U.S. Navy ships, and China is quickly closing the gap in any areas of deficiency. China's Navy is viewed as posing a major challenge to the U.S. Navy's ability to achieve and maintain wartime control of blue water ocean areas in the Western Pacific, the first such challenge the U.S. Navy has faced since the end of the Cold War. China's Navy forms a key element of a Chinese challenge to the long-standing status of the United States as the leading military power in the Western Pacific. China's naval modernization effort encompasses a wide array of platform and weapon acquisition programs, including anti-ship ballistic missiles ASBMs, anti-ship cruise missiles ASCMs, submarines, surface ships, aircraft, unmanned vehicles, UVs, and supporting C4ISR, command and control, communications, computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, systems. China's naval modernization effort also includes improvements in maintenance and logistics, doctrine, personnel quality, education, and training, and exercises. China's military modernization effort, including its naval modernization effort, is assessed as being aimed at developing capabilities for addressing the situation with Taiwan militarily, if need be, for achieving a greater degree of control or domination over China's near seas region, particularly the South China Sea, for enforcing China's view that it has the right to regulate foreign military activities in its 200-mile maritime exclusive economic zone, for defending China's commercial sea. Lines of communication, particularly those linking China to the Persian Gulf, for displacing U.S. influence in the Western Pacific, and for asserting China's status as the leading regional power and a major world power. Consistent with these goals, observers believe China wants its navy to be capable of acting as part of a Chinese anti-access area denial force, a force that can deter U.S. intervention in a conflict in China's near seas region over Taiwan or some other issue, or failing that, delay the arrival or reduce the effectiveness of intervening U.S. forces. Additional missions for China's Navy include conducting maritime security operations, including anti-piracy, evacuating Chinese nationals from foreign countries when necessary, and conducting humanitarian assistance, disaster response operations. Until recently, China's naval modernization effort appeared to be focused less on increasing total platform numbers, such as number of ships and aircrafts, than on increasing the modernity and capability of Chinese platforms. Some categories of ships, however, are now increasing in number. The planned ultimate size and composition of China's navy is not publicly known. In contrast to the U.S. Navy, China does not release a Navy force level goal or detailed information about planned ship procurement rates, planned total ship procurement quantities, planned ship retirements, and resulting projected force levels. Although China's naval modernization effort has substantially improved China's naval capabilities in recent years, China's Navy currently is assessed as having limitations or weaknesses in certain areas, including joint operations with other parts of China's military, anti-submarine warfare, long-range targeting, a limited capacity for carrying out at-sea resupply of combatant ships operating far from home waters, a need to train large numbers of personnel to crew its new ships, and a lack of recent combat experience. China is working to reduce or overcome such limitations and weaknesses. Although China's navy has limitations and weaknesses, it may nevertheless be sufficient for performing missions of interest to Chinese leaders. As China's navy reduces its weaknesses and limitations, it may become sufficient to perform a wider array of potential missions. In addition to modernizing its navy, China in recent years has substantially increased the size of its Coast Guard. China's Coast Guard is, by far, the largest of any country in East Asia. 
China also operates a sizable maritime militia that includes a large number of fishing vessels. China relies primarily on its maritime militia and coast guard to assert and defend its maritime claims in its near seas region, with the navy operating over the horizon as a potential backup force. Now, let's take a look at some selected elements of China's naval modernization effort. Anti-ship ballistic missiles, ASBMs. China reportedly is fielding two types of land-based ballistic missiles with the capability of hitting ships at sea. The DF-21D, a roadmobile anti-ship ballistic missile, ASBM, with a range of more than 1,500 kilometers, more than 910 nautical miles. And the DF-26, a roadmobile, multi-role intermediate range ballistic missile, IRBM, with a maximum range of about 4,000 kilometers, about 2,160 nautical miles, that DOD says is capable of conducting both conventional and nuclear precision strikes against ground targets as well as conventional strikes against naval targets. Submarines. China has been steadily modernizing its submarine force, and most of its submarines are now built to relatively modern Chinese and Russian designs. Qualitatively, China's newest submarines might not be as capable as Russia's newest submarines, but compared to China's earlier submarines, which were built to antiquated designs, its newer submarines are much more capable. Most of China's submarines are non-nuclear powered attack submarines, SSs. China also operates a small number of nuclear powered attack submarines, SSNs, and a small number of nuclear powered ballistic missile submarines, SSBNs. The number of SSNs and SSBNs may grow in coming years, but the force will likely continue to consist mostly of SSs. DOD states that the plan will likely maintain between 65 and 70 submarines through the 2020s, replacing older units with more capable units on a near one-to-one -one basis. ONI states that China's submarine force continues to grow at a low rate, though with substantially more capable submarines replacing older units. Current expansion at submarine production yards could allow higher future production numbers. ONI projects that China's submarine force will grow from a total of 66 boats in 2020 to 76 boats in 2030. China's newest series-built SS design is the UN class, Type 039, its newest SSN class is the Shang class, Type 093, and its newest SSBN class is the Jin, Type 094. In May 2020, it was reported that two additional Type 094 SSBNs had entered service, increasing the total number in service to six. Submarine Weapons China's submarines are armed with one or more of the following, ASCMs, wire-guided, and wake-homing torpedoes, and mines. Wake-homing torpedoes can be very difficult for surface ships to decoy. Each Jin-class SSBN is armed with 12 JL-2 nuclear-armed submarine-launched ballistic missiles, SLBMs.
Aircraft Carriers China's first aircraft carrier, Liaoning, Type 001, entered service in 2012. China's second aircraft carrier, and its first fully indigenously built carrier, Shandong, Type 002, entered service on December 17, 2019. Chinese press reports in October 2020 stated that the ship has completed testing and is scheduled to be combat ready by the end of 2020. China's third carrier, the Type 003, is under construction, ONI expects it to enter service by 2024. China's fourth carrier, reportedly also to be built to the Type 003 design, reportedly may begin construction as early as 2021. ONI states that China has two shipyards expected to be used for aircraft carrier production, though several other large commercial yards could, in theory, also build carriers. Observers have speculated that China may eventually field a force of four to six, or possibly more than six, aircraft carriers. In late November 2019, it was reported that the Chinese government, while deciding to proceed with the construction of the fourth carrier, had put on hold plans to build a fifth carrier, known as the Type 004, which was to be nuclear-powered, due to budgetary and technical considerations. Observers expect that it will be some time before China masters carrier-based aircraft operations on a substantial scale. Liuning, Type 001 Liuning is a refurbished ex-Ukrainian aircraft carrier that China purchased from Ukraine in 1998 as an unfinished ship. It is conventionally powered, has an estimated full load displacement of 60,000 to 66,000 tons, and reportedly can accommodate an air wing of 30 or more fixed-wing airplanes and helicopters, including 24 fighters. The Liuning lacks aircraft catapults and instead launches fixed-wing airplanes off the ship's bow using an inclined ski ramp. In May 2018, China reportedly announced that the aircraft carrier group formed around Liaoning had reached initial operational capability, IOC, although that term might not mean the same as it does when used by DOD in connection with U.S. weapons systems. Shandong, Type 002 Shandong is a modified version of the Liaoning design that incorporates some design improvements, including features that reportedly will permit it to embark and operate a larger air wing of 40 aircraft that includes 36 fighters. Its displacement is estimated at 66,000 to 70,000 tons. Type 003 Carriers Press reports have generally stated that China's Type 003 carriers may have a displacement of 80,000 tons to 85,000 tons. A November 29, 2020, press report, however, aircraft carriers, which have a displacement of about 100,000 tons. The Type 003 carriers are expected to be equipped with electromagnetic catapults rather than a ski ramp which will improve the range-slash-payload capability of the fixed-wing aircraft that they operate. The start of construction of the first Type 003 carrier was announced in the Chinese press in November 2018. Type 004 Carrier A March 15, 2018, press report stated that following the Type 003 carrier design, China was to begin building a Type 004 carrier design that would displace 90,000 to 100,000 tons and, in addition to being equipped with electromagnetic catapults, be nuclear-powered. As mentioned above, in late November 2019, it was reported that the Chinese government had put on hold plans to build this Type 004 design.
carry. Surface Competence China since the early 1990s has put into service numerous new classes of indigenously built surface competence, including a new cruiser, or large destroyer, several classes of destroyers and frigates, a new class of corvettes, or light frigates, and a new class of missile-armed patrol craft. These new classes of surface competence demonstrate a significant modernization of PLA Navy surface competent technology. DOD states that China's Navy remains engaged in a robust shipbuilding program for surface competence, producing new guided missile cruisers, guided missile destroyers, and corvettes. These assets will significantly upgrade the air defense, anti-ship, and anti-submarine capabilities of China's Navy and will be critical as China's Navy expands its operations beyond the range of the PLA's shore-based air defense systems. DIA states that the era of past designs has given way to production of modern multi-mission destroyer, frigate, and corvette classes as China's technological advancement in naval design has begun to approach a level commensurate with and in some cases exceeding, that of other modern navies. China is also upgrading its older surface competence with new weapons and other equipment. Type 055 Cruiser, Large Destroyer China is building a new class of cruiser, or large destroyer, called the Ren High Class or Type 055, that reportedly displaces between 10,000 and 13,000 tons. A March 7, 2021, press report by a Chinese media outlet states that the ship displaces more than 12,000 tons. The first Type 055 ship was reportedly commissioned into service on January 12, 2020, about two and a half years after it was launched. In August 2020, it was reported that the seventh ship in the class was delivered to the Navy in May 2020, that the eighth ship in the class was launched on August 30, 2020, and that the eighth ship will complete the first group of Type 055 destroyers. Type 052 Destroyer China since the early 1990s has put into service multiple new classes of indigenously built destroyers, the most recent of which is the Liuyang 3, Type 052D, class which displaces about 7,500 tons and is equipped with phased array radars and vertical launch missile systems that outwardly are broadly similar to those on U.S. Navy cruisers and destroyers. Type 052D ships have been in serial production for some time, and the 25th such ship was reportedly launched on August 30, 2020. Press reports in March 2021 stated that China is now commissioning an upgraded version of the Type 052D, informally called the Type 052DL, that incorporates an extended length helicopter flight deck and a new radar. Type 054 Frigate The most recent of the indigenously built frigates is the Jiankai 2, Type 054A, class, which displaces about 4,000 tons. ONI states that 30 Type 054 has entered service between 2008 and 2019, and that no additional Type 054 as are currently under construction. Type 056 Corvette 
China has also built in large numbers over a relatively short time period, a new type of corvette, or a light frigate, called the Jiangdao class or Type 056, which reportedly displaces 1,300 tons to 1,500 tons. Type 056 ships were built at a high annual rate in four shipyards, the first was commissioned in 2013, and the 72nd and final ship of the type was reportedly commissioned in early 2021, implying an average commissioning rate of about eight ships per year. The rapid growth in the number of Type 056 Corvettes since 2013 accounts for a substantial share of the net increase in the total number of ships in China's Navy since 2013. Type 071 Amphibious Ship China's new Yuzhou, or Type 071 amphibious ships have an estimated displacement of more than 19,855 tons, compared to about 25,900 tons for the U.S. Navy's new San Antonio, LPD-17, class amphibious ships. The fifth Type 071 ship was reportedly commissioned into service in September 2018, and at least two more reportedly are under construction. Type 075 Amphibious Assault Ship On September 25, 2019, China launched the first of a new type of amphibious assault ship called the Yishin, or Type 075 that has an estimated displacement of 30,000 to 40,000 tons, compared to 41,000 to 45,000 tons for U.S. Navy LHA LHD type amphibious assault ships. On April 11, 2020, it was reported that a fire had occurred on the ship, published photographs showed smoke rising from the ship and subsequent smoke stains at the ship's stern. On August 5, it was reported that the ship had begun its first sea trial, suggesting that some or all of the damage caused by the fire had been repaired. China reportedly launched the second Type 075 ship, on April 22, 2020, and the third on January 29, 2021. Possible Type 076 catapult-equipped amphibious assault ship In July 2020, it was reported that China might be planning to build the first of a new class of amphibious assault ships, called the Type 076 by observers, that would be equipped with electromagnetic catapults, which would enhance its ability to support operations by fixed-wing aircraft and make it somewhat more like an aircraft carrier. The planned ultimate size and composition of China's Navy is not publicly known. The U.S. Navy makes public its force-level goal and regularly releases a 30-year shipbuilding plan that shows planned procurements of new ships, planned retirements of existing ships, and resulting projected force levels, as well as a five-year shipbuilding plan that shows, in greater detail, the first five years of the 30-year shipbuilding plan. In contrast, China does not release a Navy force-level goal or detailed information about planned ship procurement rates, planned total ship procurement quantities, planned ship retirements, and resulting projected force levels. It is possible that the ultimate size and composition of China's Navy is an unsettled and evolving issue even among Chinese military and political leaders. One observer states that it seems the majority of past foreign projections of Chinese military and Chinese Navy procurement scale and speed have been underestimates. All military forces have a desired force requirement and a desired critical mass to aspire toward. Whether the Chinese Navy is close to its desired force or not, is of no small consequence. Table 1 shows numbers of certain types of Chinese Navy ships from 2005 to the present, and the number of China Coast Guard ships from 2017 to the present, as presented in DOD's annual reports on military and security developments involving China. DOD states that China has the largest navy in the world, 
with an overall battle force of approximately 350 ships and submarines including over 130 major surface combatants. In comparison, the U.S. Navy's battle force is approximately 293 ships as of early 2020. DIA states that although the overall inventory has remained relatively constant, the PLAN is rapidly retiring older, single-mission warships in favor of larger, multi-mission ships equipped with advanced anti-ship, anti-air, and anti-submarine weapons and sensors and command and control facilities. Table 2 shows comparative numbers of Chinese and U.S. battle force ships, and figures for certain types of ships that contribute toward China's total number of battle force ships, from 2000 to 2030, with the figures for 2025 and 2030 being projections. The figures for China's ships are taken from an ONI information paper of February 2020. It might be said that China's Navy surpassed the U.S. Navy in terms of total number of battle force ships sometime between 2015 and 2020. However, it is important to keep in mind the differences in composition between the two navies. The U.S. Navy, for example, currently has many more aircraft carriers, nuclear-powered submarines, and cruisers and destroyers, while China's Navy currently has many more diesel attack submarines, frigates, and corvettes. Table 3 shows numbers of certain types of Chinese Navy ships in 2020, and projections of those numbers for 2025, 2030, and 2040, along with the total number of U.S. Navy battle force ships in 2020. The U.S. Navy projects that between 2020 and 2040, the total number of Chinese ships of the types shown in the table will increase by 94, or about 39 percent, with most of that increase, 77 ships out of 94, coming from roughly equal increases in numbers of large surface combatants, cruisers and destroyers 39 ships, and small surface combatants, frigates and corvettes 38 ships. Numbers of ballistic missile submarines and nuclear-powered attack submarines are each projected to more than double between 2020 and 2040, and the total number of diesel attack submarines is projected to remain almost unchanged. The number of large surface combatants is projected to almost double, and the number of small surface combatants is projected to increase by more than one-third. Numbers of larger, LHA and LPD type, amphibious ships are projected to increase, and the number of smaller, LST-type, amphibious ships is projected to decline, with the result that the total number of amphibious ships of all kinds is projected to decline slightly. The U.S. Navy in recent years has taken a number of actions to counter China's naval modernization effort. Among other things, the U.S. Navy has shifted a greater percentage of its fleet to the Pacific, assigned its most capable new ships and aircraft and its best personnel to the Pacific, maintained or increased general presence operations, training and developmental exercises, and engagement and cooperation with Allied and other navies in the Indo-Pacific, increased the planned future size of the Navy. initiated, increased, or accelerated numerous programs for developing new military technologies and acquiring new ships, aircraft, unmanned vehicles, and weapons. Begun development of new operational concepts, such as, new ways to employ Navy and Marine Corps forces, for countering Chinese maritime A2AD forces, and signaled that the Navy in coming years will shift to a more distributed fleet architecture that will feature a smaller portion of larger ships, a larger portion of smaller ships, and a substantially greater use of unmanned vehicles. U.S. Navy efforts to increase cooperation with naval forces from allies and other countries such as Japan, Australia, and India appear aimed in part at expanding existing bilateral forms of naval cooperation, for example, U.S.-Japan, U.S.-Australia, 
US India, into trilateral or quadrilateral forms that could enhance the ability of the United States and its allies in the Indo-Pacific region to balance against China's growing military capabilities and deter potential assertive actions by China. Many of the Navy's programs for acquiring highly capable ships, aircraft, and weapon systems can be viewed as intended, at least in part, at improving the U.S. Navy's ability to counter Chinese maritime A2AD capabilities. Examples of new technologies being developed by the Navy that might be of value in countering Chinese maritime A2AD capabilities include large unmanned vehicles, lasers, the electromagnetic railgun, and the gun-launched guided projectile, aka hypervelocity projectile.